free fall and stretch. For comic effect, characters are often stretched when they start to fall. However, gravity does not physically stretch falling objects. In fact, weightlessness occurs during falling, even though gravity is present. NASA even has a special airplane for training astronauts in freefall weightlessness. The Vomit Comet nickname tells you that it's quite a wild roller coaster ride. This research aircraft Let's watch. is the ultimate roller coaster ride, peaking at 34,000 feet over the Gulf of Mexico. The plane follows a parabolic flight path to produce weightlessness. A typical flight consists of about 32 arcs. As the plane climbs towards the top of the parabola, passengers feel the force of nearly two Gs, or twice their body weight. Once the plane starts to go over the top of the invisible arc and begins descending back toward Earth, flyers free fall, experiencing nearly 25 seconds of zero gravity. The passengers, and any objects not nailed down, are weightless. You're floating there in the middle of the aircraft go and your mind's kind of going all over the place saying this isn't right and you're just trying to I guess get your bearings all the time. The plane is more commonly known as the vomit comet because of its reputation to wreak havoc on the human stomach. Another man down, man down. Each year Now skydiving is not pure freefall because of air resistance. The skydiver is not weightless uh, due to this pressure force, and that's why you need to be inside of an airplane to achieve weightlessness. In parts of the plane crash scene from Madagascar 2, the characters are in weightless freefall, but in other parts of that scene, they're not. The scene is frenetic and funny, so not only does it not matter, we don't even notice. Objects do visually stretch as they gain speed due to motion blur. The amount of motion blur in a photograph depends on the object's speed and on the exposure time. A fundamental requirement for realism in animation is motion perception, also called beta movement. This illusion occurs when a sequence of images is interpreted by the brain as motion. Motion perception occurs for frame rates greater than about 10 frames per second. Motion perception is often, often mistakenly identified with persistence of vision, but the two are different. For example, traditional film projectors use a rotating shutter which blocks the lamp when advancing from one frame to the next. The shutter eliminates motion blur between frames as the film advances. Due to persistence of vision, we don't notice the flicker if the frame rate is fast enough. To demonstrate motion perception, try moving your arms quickly while a strobe light is flashing. Motion perception is destroyed if you move fast enough. You may also see multiple images due to persistence of vision. In animation, when the motion is slow, the overlapping of an object from one frame to the next helps maintain motion perception. When the action is too fast, motion perception can be lost because the object seems to disappear and reappear. In animation, this is known as strobing. Let's see an example of strobing. For the animation on the left, the ball seems to appear and disappear around the top and bottom of the bounce. The animation on the right preserves motion perception. Strobing is more noticeable in your peripheral vision, so try watching this without looking directly at the screen. Stretch is used in animation to reduce strobing by minimizing the blank spaces between drawings. The Dover Boys is a classic cartoon directed by Chuck Jones that has great examples of stretch animation, also called smear animation. 
Hall. Let's watch. An arch enemy of the Dover Boys squanders his misspent life. Hark! The Dover Boys. Dread them. Double dread them. They are escorting Dora Standpipe. Dear rich Dora Standpipe, how I love her! Father's money. Confound those Dover boys! Oh, how I hate them! I hate Tom! I hate Dick! And I hate Larry! They drive me to drink! Confound them. Stretch happens quickly, so the distortion is perceived as motion blur, without actually blurring the image. Modern animation uses both motion blur and stretch. Stretch can even be used in stop motion animation, as in Paranorman, which used special faceplates. In summary, the force of gravity does not physically stretch objects as they fall. Characters in free fall are weightless. Fast moving objects visually appear to stretch due to motion blur. Strobing is the disruption of motion perception for a sequence of images. Motion blur and stretch are used to minimize strobing in animation. So the next time you're watching animation, look for stretch and think about how and why it's used.